In this video, I'm going to show you how to make custom motions by mashing together existing pre-animated motions. So in this video, I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make custom motions by mashing up existing motions. Uh, on the screen here, I've set up four characters. Uh, obviously, you won't need to do all this, but I've set all this up just for the purpose of this tutorial. What I'm going to do is add a different existing pre-animated motion to each of these dummy characters and these labels are those motions that I'm going to use and then I'm going to add all of those motions to this character and we're going to edit the individual motions to remove anything in them that we don't want and we'll mash things together and shorten it out so that we get perhaps something that could be used as a stand and talk motion over here from these uh, three different character motions that we've got there. So, and as I said, obviously you don't need to do all this, you would just do this on the final character, but I thought this would be a handy reference for you. So all of these characters can be found in the free resources that come with Cartoon Animator. You'll find them in the actor pack. And we just go into the actor, go human actor, and you'll see this particular character here obviously comes with it. It's just this character here. And these dummy characters are the dummy for 360 motion characters here, and it's the three-quarter side angle character that I'm using uh, for this demonstration. So We'll get out of that and the motions that I'm going to use come from the animation pack here go into that and we're going down to into the 2d motions g3 humans male and then we're going into the side motions to find them the first motion we're going to be applying is this idle stand motion so it's pretty much near the top here this motion here idle stand so I've got my First character selected, I'm just going to double click on it. Won't worry about this warning, just about the fact that this character's got bone hands, uh, whereas this motion is for a character with sprite hands. So there you go, that's the motion on that character. And then we're going to add the helpless motion to this character. It's also in this same folder. We just scroll immediately above here and double click on that. Again, we get this warning. And lastly, we're going to add doubt to this character. Also in the same folder, we just scroll up a bit and it's this motion here. And now I've shortened my project to the exact length I need for all three of these motions in a row. So you can see down here, Playhead is at the end of the project and it's only got 409 frames in it. Uh, it's optional if you want to do that. I just did it uh, so that it's easier for me to look at the timeline. So the next thing I'm going to do is add all three of those motions to this character here. So we bring the playhead back to the start, select him, and we'll start by adding the idle stand motion. And immediately add the helpless motion right after that just by double clicking on the helpless one and immediately after that we'll add the doubt motion Now all of these motions have a little bit of FFD motion applied to them in the timeline uh, I don't want any of that with these, this particular character motion. So what we're going to do is go back to the start, open up the timeline, select this character, and I've got this icon selected, so only what I've got selected shows up in the timeline. And I've got my motion and FFD tracks open. So you see over here on FFD clip, idle stand has this FFD applied. If you don't want that on there, all you've got to do is select it and hit the delete key and that will remove that. I'm going to do the same for my other two characters. See up here, helpless has got an FFD motion which we don't want. So you'll see if I push through this it's really got some exaggeration on it and as soon as I delete that, selecting it, you'll see 
this is character no longer has the exaggeration on it. This one still does, so you can sort of compare what's going on. See right there, he really pops up and goes skinny when he goes down. And we'll get rid of the FFD on this character. Just select that in the track. Now we're going to go back to the start and select this character. See there's FFD on all of his motions, all the way across the top there. We don't want any of that. Uh, you can either select all these individually, or you can just double click over here, and you'll see that whole row of motions is now selected. You can just hit the delete key and get rid of that. Now if I play back this whole animation so far, you'll see all the exaggeration has been removed from the character. It's just the motions by themselves and I've got this playing on a loop I'm gonna take that loop off so it just plays through once now the next thing we're going to do is start editing the motions and what I want to do is what you'll notice is at the end of this motion you see the character's arms return to his sides and then when he goes into the next motion He's lifting them up again. What I'm going to do is make him go from this point with his arms folded straight to putting his arms out. So in order to do that, we're going to maybe stop this at about there, sort of at the halfway mark between putting his arms down and unfolding them. And we're going to right click at that point in this motion and we're going to break. You'll see that's broken uh, that emotion into two sections and we're going to delete this bit. So that now he stops there and you'll see this helpless motion actually starts with his hands from the sides we don't want that we want to go sort of somewhere maybe around there we we'll have to go down a little bit we'll break at that point get rid of the start of that then we're going to move this blend motion out just to see how that works going from there up to there without putting his arms down. Now obviously I'm going to bring this closer together but for the moment so that these motions here still line up with where they are in on this character I'm going to leave that as is. That's looking pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is scroll along into this motion and I don't want that bit where he's sort of dipping down. So I'm going to get rid of that completely. We're going to go out. Starts to put his arms down. I'm going to break that about there. Right click and break. Right try there. Break that about there. And then we're going to delete that whole section. So just hit the delete key. And again I'm going to just Bring the blend section out there, see how that goes across. That's not too bad. Actually, I might even get rid of the last part of that helpless bit and just go straight into the doubt. So I'm going to delete the last bit of my helpless thing. You see, doubt goes straight back to arms at the side, but I don't want that. I'm going to start doubt just before he starts moving his feet, maybe there. So I'm going to right click at that point, break, and delete the first part of that motion. And we'll get this blend motion here, see what that looks like. And I think that's looking okay. So all of that would make a fairly good torque motion. So obviously with these blends are going to go way too slow. If you, if I played this through now and if you keep your eye on him you'll see that the blends at the various motions will be too slow. See that change there, his arms go slow and then this one is going slow again. So we want to fix that, which we can do simply by removing our blend functions. So get this and bring it back over here. Then we'll just move this up. Maybe we won't put it right up against here. We'll add that blend in like so. Then we'll do the same with this one. We'll get rid of this giant blend that we put in. Drag that motion up here. Maybe give it a few frames and blend there. Like so. 
Let's finish. And these sprite frames here uh, that were originally at the start of the clip, uh, you don't really have to worry too much about them. I think they really were only for the sprite hands, the information that would normally go into the sprite hands that uh, these characters have. Not sure. It doesn't seem to be affecting them too much. I don't think you need to worry about that a whole lot unless there's a problem with the hands. I believe this character is a sprite hands character. Uh, we can check that by looking at the sprite editor. And yes, he's got sprite hands. So uh, he's actually, his hands are actually re reacting to the sprite information in those clips. Anyway, we'll play that back. Now that we've closed the blending gap, just keep your eye on this guy. See if any of his motions look too slow. And I'd say that's pretty good. And that gives us a good torque motion that we could save out and use at a later date. So there's a couple of ways we can save this motion out. The first way is using collect clip. So I'm going to set the timeline to fit in the window so that we can see the whole three motions there and open up collect clip and we can just click and drag in the collect clip in the collect clip track till we get to the end let that go right click and we can do export uh, which will just export the body motion uh, we don't need to export the facial motion because it's all body motion form will export face and body motion and export FFDs for if you just want to export the FFD clip track. Thing is if we do export here you'll notice that a save box comes up and we can save it to anywhere that we want to save it. Uh, I'm going to save it, save it into my character test folder and I'll just put it in here and we'll call it talk side or long because it's quite a long action. But the problem with that is if we want to use it again, we have to go find it and drag it in. Uh, the other option we can do is save it to character's action menu. So we can do that by, we've already got the collect clip selected there. We can just go export or add to action menu or transfer to action menu. I do that, give it a name. Talk side long, go OK. So now if I right click on the character, action menu, all the way down the bottom here, we've got this clip talk side long that I've just added. The final way we can do this, which is kind of the way I prefer because I can save it directly into my custom folder in the content manager, is instead of doing collect clip, uh, using the animation uh, selection flags, so the area that you want to play, you can put drag that in and just select the section of the timeline that you want. So you can see here, I drag this flag here, be on there, lined up with the end of my action. And this one is on the beginning. I can now go into my custom folder and animation folder and then go into my 2D motions and I'm going into my demo motions folder here and if I just click the save button now uh, it will save all of the motion between those two flags so if I go talk side long and go OK and we can give that a thumbnail if we want to but I won't just for the purpose of saving some time so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and we'll get rid of my text bubbles here, the labels on, I'll just go delete. And I'm going to remove all the animation from each one of these. Move object animation. Remove animation. What I'm going to do is bring in each one of those motions just to show you uh, that they've all been saved and they work. I play this now, all of the characters aren't moving. Uh, the first one, we're going to use this motion file that we saved to our custom folder. We just click and drag it onto him or we could double click it. Go OK and you'll see that that animation has been saved and applied to that character. Uh, you'll notice down in the timeline it still gets an FFD clip attached but um, there's no actual exaggeration happening in there. It's just uh, for some reason all motions get an FFD um, 
clip attached on by default in Cartoon Animator 5. So we go to the next one, if we find where this file was saved to, bring this over here. See, this is my motion that I saved from out of here. I can just bring it in, drag it onto the character here. Go OK to that. You see the motion was saved that way. And finally, we select this character, go to his action menu, select talk side long that we saved down the bottom here. You see like he's got all his sprite hand data still saved. And it all works fine. So I hope you found that tutorial useful on how to create new motions by sort of mashing up existing pre-animated motions together. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. Uh, it's just a case of planning where you sort of want to break your clips so that they blend well into the next one and you don't get sort of too jerky and odd looking movement. So I hope you found that tutorial interesting and useful. There is a lot more you can do to create custom motions but this particular tutorial is demonstrating how to do it in its most simplest form which is just by taking existing motions, chopping out the pieces you want and then joining them together. So as I said hope you found it useful and I'll leave it there and see you in the next one. Bye for now.